The origins of Shea Stadium go back to the relocations of the Brooklyn Dodgers and New York Giants in 1957, which left New York without a National League baseball team. Prior to the Dodgers' departure, New York City official Robert Moses tried to interest owner Walter O'Malley in the site as the location for a new stadium, but O'Malley refused, unable to agree on location, ownership, and lease terms. O'Malley preferred to pay construction costs himself so he could own the stadium outright. He wanted total control over revenue from parking, concessions, and other events. New York City, in contrast, wanted to build the stadium, rent it, and retain the ancillary revenue rights to pay off its construction bonds. Additionally, O'Malley wanted to build his new stadium in Brooklyn, while Moses insisted on flushing meadows. When Los Angeles offered O'Malley what New York City would not complete ownership of a stadium, he left for Southern California in a preemptive bid to install the Dodgers there before a new or existing major league franchise could beat him to it. At the same time, Horace Stoneham moved his New York Giants to San Francisco, although he originally considered moving them to Minneapolis ensuring that there would be two National League teams in California and preserving the long-standing rivalry with the Dodgers that continues to this day. In 1960, the National League agreed to grant an expansion franchise to the owners of the New York franchise in the abortive Continental League, provided that a new stadium be built. Mayor Robert F. Wagner Jr. had to personally wire all National League owners and assure them that the city would build a stadium. Soon afterward, Moses and William A. Shea, the New York lawyer who had led the effort to bring National League baseball back to New York, faced a problem. New York state law of the time did not allow cities to borrow money in order to build a stadium. The only way for the city to finance a stadium would be to demonstrate that the stadium could pay for itself. With this in mind, Moses and Shea proposed to have the new team pay substantial rent in order to pay off 30-year bonds. This provision would come back to haunt the Mets years later. They would never live up to that monetary commitment, and the ensuing financial woes would be an albatross around the team for years. On October 6, 1961, the Mets signed a 30-year stadium lease with an option for a 10-year renewal. Rent for what was originally budgeted as a $9 million facility was set at $450,000 annually, with a reduction of $20,000 each year until it reached $300,000 annually. In their inaugural season in 1962, the expansion Mets played in the Polo Grounds, with original plans to move to a new stadium in 1963. In October 1962, Mets official Tom Meany said, only a series of blizzards or some other unforeseen trouble might hamper construction. That unforeseen trouble surfaced in a number of ways. The severe winter of 1962-1963, along with the bankruptcies of two subcontractors and labor issues. The result was that both the Mets and Jets played at the polo grounds for one more year. Shea Stadium was a historic sports and entertainment venue located in Flushing Meadows Corona Park in Queens, New York City. It served as the home ballpark for Major League Baseball's New York Mets from 1964 to 2008 before being demolished in 2009. The stadium was also a major music venue, hosting iconic concerts by artists such as the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Constructed as a multi-purpose stadium, Shea Stadium was a prominent symbol of sports and culture in New York City. Built to accommodate both baseball and football, Shea Stadium was named in honor of William A. Shea, a lawyer who helped bring National League Baseball back to New York after the departure of the Dodgers and the Giants in the 1950s. The stadium's circular shape and open-air design were distinctive features, with seating for over 55,000 spectators. Throughout its history, Shea Stadium witnessed many memorable moments in sports and entertainment. It was the site of the 1964-65 New York World's Fair and hosted the 1964 All-Star Game. The Mets' 1969 World Series victory and the 1986 World Series championship were celebrated at Shea Stadium, forever cementing its legacy in baseball history. 
In addition to its sports legacy, Shea Stadium was also a renowned concert venue. In August 1965, the Beatles performed to a sold-out crowd, setting a record for the largest concert attendance at the time. The Rolling Stones, The Who, and other legendary acts also graced the stage at Shea, leaving a lasting impact on the stadium's cultural significance. Despite its historical and sentimental value, Shea Stadium was demolished in 2009 to make way for the current home of the Mets, City Field. The site of the former stadium is commemorated by a plaza and a section of the parking lot at City Field, with markers and plaques honoring its rich history. While Shea Stadium is no longer standing, its legacy lives on in the hearts of Mets fans, music enthusiasts, and all those who experience the excitement of sports and entertainment within its iconic walls. Although its physical presence has faded, the memories and achievements made at Shea Stadium continue to be celebrated and cherished to this day. In accordance with New York City law, in 2009 Shea Stadium was dismantled rather than imploded. The company with the rights to sell memorabilia was given two weeks after the final game to remove seats, signage, and other potentially sellable and collectible items before demolition was to begin. The seats were the first, $869 per pair, plus tax, a combination of 86 and 69, the team's two World Series championship years, followed by other memorabilia such as the foul poles, dugouts, stadium signage, and the giant letters that spelled out she at the front of the building. After salvaging operations concluded, demolition of the ballpark began on October 14, 2008. On October 18, the scoreboard in right field was demolished, with the bleachers, batter's eye, and bullpens shortly thereafter. By November 10, the field, dugouts, and the rest of the field-level seats had been demolished. Plaque commemorating the location of Shea Stadium's home plate, now in City Field's parking lot. On January 31st, Mets fans all over New York came to Shea Stadium for one final farewell. Fans took a tour of the site, told stories, and sang songs. The last remaining section of seats was demolished on February 18th. Fans stood in awe as the remaining structure of Shea Stadium, one section of ramps, was torn down at 11.22 a.m. The locations of Shea's home plate, pitcher's mound, and bases are marked in City Field's parking lot. The plaques feature engravings of the neon baseball players that grace the exterior of the stadium from 1988 onward. Shea Stadium was the home of the New York Mets starting in 1964, and it hosted what would be its only all-star game that first year, with Johnny Callison of the Philadelphia Phillies hitting a walk-off home run in the ninth inning to win the only midsummer classic held in the Queens ballpark for the National League. A month earlier, on Father's Day, Callison's teammate, future Hall of Fame member and U.S., Senator Jim Bunning pitched a perfect game against the Mets. The stadium was often criticized by baseball purists for many reasons, even though it was retrofitted to be a baseball-only stadium after the Jets left. The upper deck was one of the highest in the majors. The lower boxes were farther from the field than similar seats in other parks because they were still on the rails that had swiveled them into position for football. Outfield seating was sparse, in part because the stadium was designed to be fully enclosed. At one time, Shea's foul territory was one of the most expansive in the majors. This was very common for ballparks built during the 1960s, in part due to the need to accommodate the larger football field. This was also because, as above mentioned, the stadium was designed to be fully enclosed, which it would never do. However, seats added over the years in the lower level greatly reduced the size of foul territory by the dawn of the 21st century. On the plus side, Shea always used a natural grass surface, in contrast to other multi-purpose stadiums such as Three Rivers Stadium, Veterans Stadium, and Riverfront Stadium, which were built in the same era and style and had artificial turf. Shea Stadium hosted postseason baseball in 1969, 1973, 1986, 1988, 1999, 2000, and 2006. It hosted the World Series in 1969, 1973, 1986, and 2000. 
It had the distinction of being the home of the 1969 Miracle Mets, led by former Brooklyn Dodger Gil Hodges that defied 101 odds and won the World Series, after seven straight seasons in last or next-to-last place. Shea became famous for the bedlam that took place after the Mets won the decisive Game 5 of the World Series, as fans stormed the field in celebration. Similar scenes took place a few weeks earlier after the Mets clinched the National League East title and then defeated the Atlanta Braves in the first National League Championship Series to win the pennant. Shea Stadium was a historic sports and entertainment venue located in Flushing Meadows Corona Park in Queens, New York City. It served as the home ballpark for Major League Baseball's New York Mets from 1964 to 2008, before being demolished in 2009. The stadium was also a major music venue, hosting iconic concerts by artists such as the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Constructed as a multi-purpose stadium, Shea Stadium was a prominent symbol of sports and culture in New York City. Built to accommodate both baseball and football, Shea Stadium was named in honor of William A. Shea, a lawyer who helped bring National League Baseball back to New York after the departure of the Dodgers and the Giants in the 1950s. The stadium's circular shape and open-air design were distinctive features, with seating for over 55,000 spectators. Throughout its history, Shea Stadium witnessed many memorable moments in sports and entertainment. It was the site of the 1964-65 New York World's Fair and hosted the 1964 All-Star Game. The Mets' 1969 World Series victory and the 1986 World Series championship were celebrated at Shea Stadium, forever cementing its legacy in baseball history. In addition to its sports legacy, Shea Stadium was also a renowned concert venue. In August 1965, the Beatles performed to a sold-out crowd, setting a record for the largest concert attendance at the time. The Rolling Stones, The Who, and other legendary acts also graced the stage at Shea, leaving a lasting impact on the stadium's cultural significance. Despite its historical and sentimental value, Shea Stadium was demolished in 2009 to make way for the current home of the Mets, City Field. The site of the former stadium is commemorated by a plaza and a section of the parking lot at City Field, with markers and plaques honoring its rich history. While Shea Stadium is no longer standing, its legacy lives on in the hearts of Mets fans, music enthusiasts, and all those who experience the excitement of sports and entertainment within its iconic walls. Although its physical presence has faded, the memories and achievements made at Shea Stadium continue to be celebrated and cherished to this day.